morning and welcome to the Stronger Than You Think podcast. I am your host, Kendra Tillman. I'm really excited because I'm doing a video podcast, which is something that I don't typically do. But I felt for today's topic, I thought it would be a great idea for us to do a video podcast. It will be nice for you to be able to see um, the person that I'm going to be introducing you to and for you to be able to see us. And we're just going to have a little bit of girl talk, talk a little bit about business and life and all that good stuff. And we're just going to enjoy, invite you all to join in with us. Um, so today for my episode of this podcast, I have invited one of my good friends, Dr. Nadia Brown. And uh, Dr. Nadia is the president and founder of Doyen Leadership Institute. It is a leadership development firm that focuses on helping women communicate more powerfully, rise up, and lead. She's also the author of a book called Leading Like a Lady, How to Shatter Your Inner Glass Ceiling. And the reason why I invited her on is because um, I really wanted her to have an opportunity to talk to you about her journey, her work journey, and how she's now helping women who are ready to make the leap from maybe a corporate position, and it doesn't even necessarily be, need to be a corporate position. Maybe you are um, a, a at-home mom, and you know what? You're ready to start a business, and whatever that looks like for you, and you're ready to make that leap, um, Dr. Nadia is going to help you. Um, she's known as a business heroine in heels, right? <laughs> Don't you love that? You got to see the cover of her book, um, Leading Like a Lady got the heels on there <laughs> and she shows women how to own their power profitability and purpose to lead from the front through her coaching and workshops she has become a pioneer in helping women break break through glass ceilings that they encounter in business so i want to welcome dr nadia and i know we're going to have a great time today a great conversation i did i started out in corporate um and it was it was funny, Kendra, because I often joke that I was not the one that had ever planned to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, I started out in, in IT as a software engineer, so I did IT support. You know, um, I uh, later went into higher ed, financial services, and my whole focus around my corporate career was I just need to find the right company. And I'll climb the ladder, I'll get a great job, and I will be totally happy with that. But there was just one problem. I didn't fit in. <laughs> no, yeah. I, was always, I just didn't fit. And even mm -hmm. in jobs where I excelled, that was, that was part of the problem. Like, I did well in terms of performance, but in terms of my ideas, in terms of my mindset, I didn't fit. And so I have people often tell me, you need to start your own business. And I would be like, no, that's not the right answer. Like entrepreneurs, they're just crazy folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have what it takes. Like I really didn't think that it would work for me. And so I just kept going. I just kept going. I was like, I'm just going to find that perfect job. I knew it was out there somewhere. But it was just one of those things where I honestly would ask the question, like, what's wrong with me? How can I cannot just go to work and be happy like everyone else yes. seems to be able to do. Um, and eventually it got to the point where after Toby and I moved to Arizona um, and we joined Faith Christian Center, that was a big piece of having that conversation around, you know, there may be something different. And when Toby and I were dating, he was the one that was so into entrepreneurship and talking about business and, you know, really investigating things. And so I always thought, you know, we got married, I would just support him because remember, yeah. I was just going to be the girl with a great job. So yeah. babe, I got yeah. your back. And then I ended up being the one to take the leap and start a business and go on that journey. So it was really interesting. So we had those conversations sometimes and we joke with one another, like, you remember when? <laughs> yes, I know. He's like, "What happened? How did, right. what, how did this happen? How did all of this happen?" And his yes. brothers me about. It's like, what is going on? But you know, it was one of those things where um, I really had to get into that frame of mind of this is possible. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, just understanding about entrepreneurship and running a business and master that mindset but i didn't i didn't always believe that i would be the one to ever do anything like this um and especially even to help other women 
build their mm -hmm. businesses. That was a journey in and of itself yes. for me to even get to that point. And so it's mm -hmm. just, it's interesting to see how things have changed and more over the years, because when I first started in my career, I was, I was determined, I'm just going to climb the ladder, you know, be a vice president, a senior VP, something yeah. great like that. I have a really cushy title on a corner yeah. office. Yeah. And life would be good. Yeah. And now it's like a total reversal of that where you're actually trying to help other women make that leap, which I think is interesting. You said that um, you didn't fit. What do you mean by that? I, um, I realized that my mindset was just different. So mm -hmm. I would, um, I would go into every job knowing that I would leave and hopefully quick sooner rather than later. And I know mm -hmm. that may seem odd, but I always just felt that my, my role was to come in, learn, do a great job. That was a no brainer, but to learn enough to move on, to do something different. Mm -hmm. And I found that a lot of times in corporate, they want you to stay. They want that mm -hmm. longevity. They want that, you know, that person to be a senior person on that team. And mm -hmm. I would just, I, um, I remember one manager at a bank where I worked and we talked, so I had that conversation, like, well, you know, what are some of the options and what does growth look like? And she was like, you know, what are your, what is your vision for me? And one of the things she said was, well, I hope you stick around for a while. And I'm thinking to myself, I hope her definition of a while is like maybe two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My max. And so, mm -hmm. um, and even with just people getting bored or doing different things in their job. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I would be the one that's like, you know what? Why don't you apply for something else? Or you can do this. Or, you know, mm -hmm. I was always that, that, that agitator or so it seemed. And, um, and so it was just one of those interesting things to really realize that I am the one that is a little different. And, but I was so young. And I remember having a conversation with one of my colleagues when I accepted the position in Phoenix. And I just asked her, I was like, can you imagine doing this same job, sitting at the same desk for the next 25, 30 years? You know, I was 30, 31 years old. I had a long time right. to go to for 65. And, um, I just couldn't imagine doing that. And so it was just one of those questions that I realized that made me a little bit different because I had a mindset that while I hadn't just embraced becoming an entrepreneur, I did embrace change and yeah. doing things different and taking on different roles and really pushing myself and challenging myself, you know, to take on new stuff, even in, within the corporate realm. Yeah. And, and that's great. I, um, I, and I do want to say this because I like, I don't necessarily want to paint a picture that if, you know, if a person is working in corporate America, there is nothing wrong with that. It, to me, this is, this is really about, you have to know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to know when they, it, it is time to leap. For some people, it is time to leap and to go. And some people, may become like the CEO of a company or they may continue to move up or the, the, the career that they have is a perfect fit for their gifts and their skills and their talents. And, um, and so for them, that would be perfect. They would be perfectly fine with that. And, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, but for, for women who are ready, right. And women mm -hmm. who just need some guidance, like they really, uh, want to know okay, I'm here. Now, how do I get over there? Right. And right. that's, that's the, that's why you're here is to kind of help us kind of feel our way from where you are right now to where you want to go. And so the question I have for you, and I, and I have just witnessed just a little tiny bit of this over the time that I've known you is kind of share like what part, um, has grit had to play for you in your journey. Right. And, um, like, if you guys can't tell, Dr. Nadia, she's just a little bit stubborn, just a little bit. And she just will not quit. She just will not give up. And so that's the reason why I want to know, for you, what part do you feel that grit has played in your journey? Uh, grit has definitely played a big part in the journey. Um, one of the things that, you know, when I talk about my journey, or even when you talk about taking a leap, especially when you're talking about not just taking a leap from one position to another, but, you know, taking a leap and leaving your job. Yeah. Um, they'll say, well, you know, it's easy for you to say because you're, you're married. You have a backup person. You have that support. Mm -hmm. And while that is true, that is very true. Toby is one of my biggest supporters, one of my mm -hmm. biggest cheerleaders. I am mm -hmm. so grateful because I know a lot of my friends and colleagues that don't have that, so I don't take it for granted. But one of the things that people don't really 
realized about our story is that when I decided to take this leap, when I reached that point where I was so upset, so frustrated and decided, you know, it's just time to do something different. Um, I was the primary breadwinner. So it wasn't one of those, my husband has this really nice job and we won't really skip a beat mm. if I left my job. But that was not our story at that time. It was one of those, we had to have a lot of discussions. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was a very emotional mm -hmm. time. And it was one of those things where I just felt like, this is the worst time in the world to start a business. Like, this makes no sense. I need to figure out how to make things work at work. And um, and even in that, you know, so the grit for that was to stick with, you know, my gut of, no, this is now the time for me to really step out there and push, but also for me to, to just accept this. Because I, like I said, I was not that girl. I was so ready to just find a great job. And I was really upset with my boss at the time for being the agitator, the person to really stir that up in me because the way that it all played out, it was so easy to be upset with her, dislike her. But now I'm very thankful for her and her role in pushing me out there. And then, you know, once you take that leap and you understand that Kendra being an entrepreneur, yes. we have these ideas, right? <laughs> we have this big vision, yes. these rose colored glasses, mm -hmm. and we're just like, oh, I'm just going to start this business mm -hmm. and we have this plan and everything's just going to work out. It's going to be easy. Easy. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be so easy. Yeah. Right. Right. It's going to have a thousand dollars in three months. It, it'll be fine. Not a problem. Right. Right. You know, I'll have this business going and it'll be great. And, you know, the stories that I've heard other people share about their journey, oops, that would never happen to me. No, of I got course things not. in the bag. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, almost all of that happened to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was um I tell people at some point along this journey you will have that point where you have to make the decision of how bad do you want it yes how bad do you yes. want yes. to succeed in your vision how bad do you want to serve the clients you've been called to serve and I had that point where things were going well for a while and I was traveling, I was speaking, and things were working. I was like, yes, this is great. Mm -hmm. And then I hit a point where things weren't working. And it was a mess. And the finances weren't there. And my husband was giving me a serious side eye. And, you know, <laughs> and I think he was probably having those moments that this probably was not a good idea yeah. for you to leave your job. But, you know, here we were. And I think one of the challenges now, Kendra, to add even more pressure to that, is you know social media and you're out there and you're doing things and so people still saw me doing things and speaking and traveling and having a great time or so it seemed and um but they didn't know that there were things that were really not right on the back end and things right. that i really, really needed to adjust um and that's where my grit really came in because i got to a point emotionally where i was just done i was just like i can't do this this is way too hard this isn't going to work. It wasn't a great idea. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, all the things that start to come into play. Um, but then I just had to make a decision of, okay, Nadia, how bad do you want it? Yeah. But also understanding that there are people out there that I am called to help and I am called. And this journey, that part of my journey would be a benefit if I would stick it out and move forward. And so it hasn't been one of those overnight, quote unquote, overnight successes. It's been five years in and um, I've had some highs and some lows. And so I've learned a lot on this journey. And so one of my desires now is even to help women that do have that desire to figure out how to make it work. Um, and with me, I was very resistant to help women leave their corporate jobs. I, um, I I had a colleague that was like, Nadia, this is a great idea. This was a couple of years ago. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> that is crazy. Why would I do that? And um, because I go in corporate and I teach women about being strong leaders. And now I'm going to teach them to leave their job. Like, that's crazy talk. I would never do that. Yeah. Um, never say never. Because yeah. here I am. And it's just because I had a lot of people who asked the question, well, how did you do it? How did you get out? What that process looked like? And I had some, you know, some lessons learned that I could share. But grit plays a part every day. Even in doing an event, you know what that's like. You have an idea to put on an event and you sign your name on a dotted line and then you're like, will anyone show up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's another one of those ideas where 
um, it seemed like a good idea at the time and I should have just let that on paper or do you just take that leap, that take, take that leap of faith and get out there and see what happens? Because this is one thing I know for sure, Kendra, is We'll never know if it would have worked if we don't take the action. Yeah, that's right. If we don't do something. Yes, you got right. to do something. And when you just, when people come back to me and they're like, I remember when you said this and it totally impacted me in a great way or it gave me the courage to do something. And I'm like, I did? Because half the time I remember what I said. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those things that, you know, I have to keep going. I have to keep trying. I have to continue to put myself out there and I just felt, it's funny, right before you and I got together, I was having a call with another colleague and I told her, I felt like in some ways, Take the Leap was prophetic. And it's a reminder for me yes. to take that leap yes. and to do things that's, that, that I'm afraid of doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not easy to say that I'm going to host an event and, you know, pull all this material together and invite people to come out. Like there are a lot of logistics behind the scenes and yes. to put yourself out there and then, you know, pray that, that it works, that people show up, that yeah. things go off without a hitch, mm -hmm. and uh, that people walk away with that value. And so I think that, you know, as I continue to go through this process, it's a daily reminder to me to do the things that make me afraid. And, I, and to me, I think so. I, I mean, the leap doesn't look the same for everybody either, right? So for some women, right. the leap for them could be, like, maybe you have a really, really tight budget. And for you to just take $50 every month and to do something to build a side business, that could be your leap. Because it's $50 that's coming out of your budget that you really can't afford to go out of your budget. And you're having faith that this is going to turn into something bigger, you know, and, and then that it's going to start producing something. And for some other people, um, maybe the leap for them is that you know, you have been an entrepreneur in the past and then you went and got a corporate job and you feel that God is leading you back to um, full-time entrepreneurship, which is what I did. <laughs> and, and then you just kind of like, woohoo, we're jumping out here. Even though that decision took months to make, like I didn't wake up one morning and be like, you know what, I'm going to leave my job today. It wasn't like that. It was months and months of prayer and talking to my husband about it. And, um, and so the leap looks different for, for everybody. And the point is just that you, if you want something different, you really do have to do something different. You have mm -hmm. to make a different choice. And that choice is not necessarily going to make you feel comfortable and make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. But um, you, you had talked about gut, um, how having, uh, you know, checking in with that inward voice about what it is um, that you want to do. And I think holding on to whatever you felt that God has spoken to your heart, you know, in those quiet times, in those moments of clarity that you've gotten, those are the times and the things that you hold on to um, when it's really hard to keep going and when it's when you really do feel like, what have I done? I have made a mess of things. Um, and sometimes maybe what you do have to do is you might have to pull back a little bit on what you're doing and, um, and move at a little bit slower pace. But the, but the goal um, today is um, to inspire you, to encourage you that if you feel that it's time for you to make that leap, then you have someone who can help you make that leap who can help you do what it is that you feel that that you're called to do so um we i'm sure we kind of like talked about this in, in a little bit of a roundabout way but um when you were speaking before can you talk a little bit about how do you feel like you have grown through this process who i um i am definitely not the same woman i was when i started mm -hmm. i um I realized that, and I love your book. <laughs> I used <laughs> up your phrase in the gym. Mostly, I'm stronger than I think. <laughs> I can push these weights. I can, I can. <laughs> um, but it takes a lot of grit. It takes a lot of grit to follow your dreams. And I think, like you said, it looks different for everyone, whether it's starting a side business or going for a promotion or whatever yeah. it may be. It takes a lot of grit to put yourself out there. and. I definitely realized that um, I, one, I realized I do hear from God because there were days when I was like, this is crazy and <laughs> God would never tell me to do something crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah he would. Right. Um, 
And the other thing is to just to have that courage. And I think that, you know, mm-hmm. having that courage to get out there, having the courage to grow and learn, um, having the courage to grow and learn in a public way and to have people watch you mess up <laughs> and then, you know, to keep going. Because one of the things is people have come back to me and they said, you know, watching you do this, watching you do something as simple as start to wear lipstick, like, because people that knew me before knew just how laid back I was, how casual I would dress, and then, you know, to see the change and the evolution, so for me, I've really grown in terms of strength, I've realized that I'm definitely stronger than I ever thought I would be, um, I've grown in terms of compassion, because I know what it's like to have, like you said earlier, to have done something and tried something and feel like you've made a complete mess of it. And, and then you just wonder like, how will I ever move past this? Yeah. And we all, no matter what we say about what people say or think it, we still have that question that runs through our mind of what will people think? What will people say? How will people respond? And so I think my compassion for people in that season and being able to truly and honestly say to them you will be fine this too shall pass you just have to keep going um and in terms of just really um that stick to itness you know like you got to stick with it you got to keep moving and learning how to be fluid and flexible and not be so rigid Mm -hmm. um but just really being courageous in terms of i have a vision and here we are you know moving towards that vision and it doesn't necessarily it looked the way I thought it would look, but, you know, just having the courage to, to go and see what could happen and what's possible. Yeah, you know, I, when, what you said about the compassion part, I love that because it's something about being willing to step out, fail, make a mistake or whatever that is very humbling for all of us, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then it makes you more compassionate when you see somebody else step out, right? It's so easy to be on your couch watching the Olympics. Yes. And talking about what well, if I was there, I would have did such and such. Or how could they be so stupid? Why would they do? Well, <laughs> you're sitting on your couch right now. <laughs> so it's like, it, it makes me, it all, I always think about, and when you said it, it triggered it, the, um, the whole, I, I don't know if it was a poem or just a speech called Daring Greatly about how the man in the arena um, has the sweat on his face. And it's like, my thought process now is that if you're not in the arena, like if you're not doing something that's pushing you outside of your comfort zone, something that can cause people to criticize you or judge you, or then what you say to me, your opinion does not matter because you're not putting your, I'm putting myself out there. I'm putting myself out there. And so I respect and admire that when I see it in other people. Yes. So even if, you know, a person had to shut their business down and go back and get a full-time job, I admire the fact that they stepped out there and did something that most people will never do. And, um, and so that just made me think about that when you talked about how it made you more compassionate because it will humble you that's for sure (laughs) quickly (laughs) yes so um and then so along those same lines so how do you feel in this process you've experienced god's grace over you during this time oh wow um I've experienced God's grace, one, in just those times of disobedience. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's just be real. I didn't always take action when I was supposed to. And we know that obedience is still disobedience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And so just his grace in that, but I've also just experienced his grace in um, and just seeing things come to pass and yeah. you know when you take that leap like you said and getting out there and doing something um seeing him just 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 bless me bless my business um the open doors that i never uh, grant favor mm-hmm. beyond my wildest imagination yes. um it has just been a really really fun journey even in those moments when mm-hmm. it didn't look that fun it didn't feel that great don't get me wrong um but when i look back i learned so much even in the quote unquote failures um and he was still there with me um and then you know to even learn that through that that story 
that that journey is now being able to benefit to other people. Because right. when I tell people, you know, I started out and there was a point in my business where I had to have a tough conversation with people that I had hired to work with me and be like, I'm not sure when I can pay you. And if yeah. you have to put myself, you know, to get on a payment plan, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, that's, that's real. very humbling. Yeah. Very humbling experience. Yeah. And um, in his grace, he just, he stayed with me. It worked out. You know, you, you got through it. It felt like one of the worst things that could ever happen. Um, but I'm still standing. And I think that that's the thing. Like, he never promised that this was going to be a walk in the park. Um, he never promised that every day was going to be super duper fun or that it would be easy. But he did promise that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And so that is what I get to stand on every day is that God is with me. and um, and if I could just, you know, tap into that and then listen, cause you know, like I said, sometimes he tells us stuff and it's like, that makes no sense. There's no guru out there online, Jesus, who said to do it this way. No. <laughs> yeah, and, and I know we all wish. Are you sure you know what you're talking right, about? Right, right, right. And I know we all wish that somebody could just, you know, make it easy, make the path just, oh, this falls into place and that falls into place. And it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> I wish it did. <laughs> I know. Don't we all wish it did? But if it did, then you wouldn't have all these great lessons. You wouldn't have the strength of character that you have to be able to be able to help other people. So it's, you know, it, it's the lesson. And it's one of the things, yeah. you know, it is. And it, and it makes you relatable. And I think sometimes we have, and it's funny because on the one hand, we, we have those moments where we truly can relate to someone mm -hmm. who's been through something. Yes. You know, we love the comeback story. That's why they tell the backstory all the time. Like even in the Olympics, you're like, oh yeah. my God, I hope she wins yeah. the gold. Yeah. Right? Cause she's more than now than just another runner or swimmer yeah. or whatever the case yeah. may be. Um, and yet for some some reason we start our businesses and we start you know doing what it is that we love to do um we feel like we have to be perfect that if we make a mistake and we stumble like people don't get it and that's the very thing that draws people to us is because we're relatable mm -hmm. and we get it i remember a coach i hired one of the reasons why i hired her was she shared the story she did an event she had a big name person there she had hundreds of people in attendance and she drove home owing forty thousand dollars oh and right, right, I was like 40, like I couldn't imagine. Whoa. And she talked about the stress and the phone calls and the, you know, some broken relationships and all that she had to do to overcome that. Wow. But there she was standing before me on mm -hmm. a stage, hosting her event, sharing what she'd learned. And I was like, if she can do that and come back from that, surely I can come back from where I am. And, you know, I hired her, I worked with her, we're still great friends to this day, but that was one of the things that I remember the most about her story, and one of the reasons why I was like, I like her, I think I want to work with her. That is, that is so good. I was at a, um, I was at actually at a, a conference for women um, called Business Boutique, and it was um, at a church, and it was um, a few months back. And Lisa Turkhurst, which is one of my favorite authors, she got up and spoke. Oh, and yeah. what she talked about is how people identify with weakness more than they do with strength. And to me, that is, that is exactly what you're talking about. Because there is something in every single one of us where nobody wants to feel alone. Like, you don't want to feel like you're the only person that has, has had some, something like that happen to them. Where, you know... You know, because otherwise you feel like, okay, well, maybe I'm not good enough. But when you know that other people have experienced the same type of things that you've experienced, it's something about that that's comforting, you know, yeah. of knowing that, um, you know, that to me, that's like bearing one another's burdens. Like we, we all know what it feels like to, to try something and give it a hundred percent and a hundred percent wasn't good enough and it, and it didn't turn out exactly the way you wanted and to know like you said that even though she went through that because for most people that would have been their breaking point where they would have been like i'm done i'm never trying that again peace out <laughs> see you later leave me alone i'm not doing this ever again but instead she still was standing she still stood and i just think that is an amazing amazing story wow that's all i can say it's just wow it is and so like so for your event so i think that in this conversation we have kind of talked about a lot of the fears 
that women have to overcome in their hearts and in their minds when they are about to take a leap of faith, right? Mm -hmm. And so I know your event that's going to be coming up in October, um, the leap event, I kind of wanted to give you an opportunity to just share what they can expect from that event. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, one of the things that you can expect is that um, you will have fun. Um, I am not the, while I have doctor, you know, letters behind my name, uh, if you haven't already figured it out, I'm not the boring lecturer girl, I'm just not. <laughs> so I like engagement, I like you, but I also want to really get some time for the how-tos, because I feel like, you know, in this industry, Kendra, we've seen a lot of you know, here's what you need to do, right? Yeah. A whole list of what's and why's, but how? How do I do this? How do I put together my exit strategy? How do I calculate what I like to call your freedom number, which is the number, you know, the amount of revenue your business needs to generate in order for you to leave? Um, how do I do a lot of these things? How do I find my target market? How do I build my tribe? How do I connect with other women who get it? Yeah. And one of the things that um, a big piece for me and any, any of the speakers that I'll share the stage with is empowering you to know not just what to do, mm -hmm. but how to do it yeah. and having time I'm built in to get it started. Because yeah. I've also been very guilty. I'm sure you haven't done this, Kendra. It's just me. Not me. Um, no, not me. Gone to a conference, right? <laughs> and, um, and you take notes, so I always have a notebook with me. So I have beautiful notes, and I take them in different colors. And so it's like the rainbow in my notebook is gorgeous. And then I come home with my cute little conference bag and all my freebie goodies and mm -hmm. all this wonderful stuff, and, and it goes into the office closet. Yep. And then I don't do it. <laughs> and there you go. And then I talk about, oh, it was an amazing, life-changing event, but I haven't taken the actions. And so what I want to do is for you to start taking the actions before you leave Dallas. You start working on that plan. So, and then you know exactly what comes next. But a big piece also is yeah. to build community. And so you're surrounded by like-minded women and having someone to text you or call you or Facebook you yeah. and be like, so um, Nadia, there were 15 things that you said you were gonna have That's done. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because there, there's power in accountability. There's power in knowing that Kendra's going to call me yep. and say, all right, Nadia, so what have you done? Mm -hmm. And um, that's the vision I have. It's just not just another event, just another workshop, but it's one of those that when you leave, you're leaving with a strategy. You're leaving with community. You're leaving with practical tools and, you know, and, and tips and checklists and all those things that are going to help you move forward. Because um, as we've often heard our pastor say, you know, success is what happens when opportunity and preparation meet. And I feel like a big fear, a part of the fear around taking the leap is we don't, so we sometimes don't know what to do. Right. We don't know how to do it. Um, and then we just don't feel prepared. And yeah. so let's start getting you prepared. What does it take for you to be prepared? So when those opportunities come, you can take full advantage advantage of them and then turn those into successes right and 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 to me one of the things that i i like about the the event is the fact that like you said the how-to part of it and um so that it kind of helps you get out of your own head and um and just start action you know it's like i t i tell people it's like people look for clarity while they're trying to sit still but a lot of times clarity comes when you're moving. You need mm -hmm. to be moving and doing something and you can spend years of your life just sitting there trying to quote, figure things out in your own head. But if you get in this environment this, with other women who are working towards the same purpose that you're working towards and then you get some instruction about specifics of what to do, then at least you're moving. And then it's like, okay, I can make this adjustment over here. I can fix that. Oh, okay, I need to do that. Oh, I didn't know that. Let me learn that. And right. so I think all of that helps you start getting closer to whatever that goal is that you have for your business idea. Absolutely. And then just breaking down the actionable steps. I remember when I first started my business, I, my goal was to generate $3,000 a month. That mm -hmm. was it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I may say that's it. Other people are like, $3,000. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. $3,000. And um, 
that number just felt so monumental. I mm-hmm. could not figure out it mm-hmm. just the number in and of itself just frightened me. Yeah. And I had a call. You know, my coach and she was like, okay, Nadia, let's say you had clients. What would you charge, you know, to work with clients? Five hundred dollars a month. Great. If you got six clients, like it just instead of focusing on the three thousand, it yeah. was like, work with six people like this was like okay I can do that I can you know I can meet six people that I would want to work with who would want to work with me and we could be and so being able to get like you said get it out of your head Mm -hmm. and break it down into small actionable steps because that's when you're like I can do that and it really is it starts one client at a time so you can just focus on the one Mm -hmm. just the one the 3,000, the 120,000, 1 million, whatever that bigger number is, because that can paralyze you. So we just break it down like, okay, I see that. Now let's break it all the way down to the point where you can breathe. And then it seems doable. It seems a lot more doable to say, okay, I think I can find and, you know, figure out how to work with six people versus how to generate three yeah dollars or whatever that dollar amount may be so to really break that down to where you can breathe Mm -hmm. and move forward yeah and and i think too one of the um skills that you have is the fact that you're a coach and so that is one of the things that is a benefit to people that come is your coaching skills right and i mean every great team has a great coach you know and someone who can push you and help you think outside the box, think about things that you never thought about, help you get rid of your excuses, show you that you are stronger than you think you are and that you can do things that you thought you couldn't do. And so if your event is a leap event, like you're leaping with them, but you're not like getting behind them and pushing them on their face and, you know, (laughs) so that they fail, right? Right. (laughs) It's like, you know, grabbing their hand and we're jumping together. We got this. We got this. So what's, what is the web address that they can find all the information about the event? You can find more information about the Take the Leap event at www.taketheleapevent.com. That's taketheleapevent.com. Awesome. So thank you so much. I'm so happy that you got to come on here and we got to talk about this. I know that this is going to be a blessing. This event is this October and it's going to be in Dallas. And um, it's going to be a great event. And I know that a lot of women's lives are going to be changed for the better. And we can't wait to hear some of the testimonials that are going to come out of this event. So thank you, Dr. Nadia. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, you're welcome. So thank you all for listening and watching. You can find more information about her event um, on my website as well at www.strongerthanyouthink.co. Strongerthanyouthink.co. And remember, success is achieved through perseverance. So never, never, never give up. God bless you. Never.